Hey, what's up everyone? Jace Two Cents here, and today's the day. We finally have all the deets on the new 40 series super cards that are gonna be making their way to the market. And we're gonna talk about some things here. This is this is uh, interesting because we were concerned about a huge GPU lineup, but Nvidia's gonna actually be discontinuing some cards here. So we're gonna talk about whether or not uh, any of this means anything to you, whether or not you should wait, whether or not you should buy now. We got all the information, so let's get right into it. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption. That new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. So if you remember in the rumor roundup video that I did, um, I talked about the fact that the rumors were that there was gonna be a 4070 Super, a 4070 Ti Super, and a 4080 Super. Um, so right off the bat, too long didn't read, that's true. Those cards are coming out. They're coming out uh, between the 16th to the 31st of January, I believe it is, or the 17th. Anyway, three cards in one month, which is nuts. NVIDIA typically would like spread those out quite a bit more. They are launching literally from the bottom up. So the 4070 Super will be the first card available, 4070 Ti Super will be the second card available, and then 4080 Super will be the next card available. So let's talk about this here. So the, let's talk about the 4080 Super. So part of the rumors that true, that's true, as you can see right here, the 999 price point. So one of the things that we had talked about was like, are they gonna cancel the 4080 and put the 4080 Super in that spot? I said that that was a possibility that they might do in my rumor video. That's exactly what they are doing. The 4080 is being sunset entirely. What does that mean? It means it's being discontinued. All 4080 models moving forward in terms of new stock being shipped to uh, the, the retailers, the e-tailers, the SIs are going to be 4080 Supers. This is a good thing because it's anywhere between zero to 5% faster for $200 less. So that is a good thing. The downside is that it's still a thousand dollar card. It's not cheap, but more performance for less money is the first time we've seen Nvidia sort of ditch the model of more performance for more money equaling the same ex exact amount of FPS per dollar. So it's kind of a move in the right direction, but it's still a pretty expensive card. It's also a fully realized uh, 8103. So that means there's no more disabled SMs on there. The 4080 had two disabled SMs. The 4080 Super is a fully unlocked 103 die. So we know that means there's no other, there's not like a 4080 Ti Super card coming, unless that ends up being on the 8102, which is the die that the 4090 is. But with that said, um, they're comparing performance here, and obviously you need to wait to see the independent reviews uh, through myself, Gamers Nexus, Linus, uh, you know, all the usual suspects that will do your in-depth reviews, and then mine. I, I don't do super in-depth. You guys know that. So if we look at sort of the generational jump here, the 2080 Super 11 shader T-flops versus 34 shader T-flops in the 3080 Ti, and 52 shader T-flops uh, in the 4080 Super. So it's 16 gigabytes of uh, GX, GX6, but as you can see here, it also has an AV1 encoder, an H.264 encoder, so did the 40, uh, 4080. Um, they're just comparing these to the previous gens. I think it's funny that they chose the 3080 Ti. This is the part I, I really wanna talk about and test and show you in the videos. We've seen this in the 4080s as well. So we see here we have a total graphics power of 320 watts, but an average gaming power of 246 watts. We saw this with the 30, uh, 4080 as well where it would not hit 320 watt. And a lot of people looked at that as going, I'm not getting the advertised performance I was promised. Um, that's not entirely true because if you're getting the clock speed you were promised and you're getting the GPU utilization you were promised, which is 99%, it doesn't have to hit 320 watts. Um, it's actually fairly efficient. So 246 watts total gaming power uh, or average gaming power, we'll talk about that when we do our testing. Um, but the, the fact that we are getting significantly more performance than a 3080 Ti at 30 watt lower TGP and over 100 watts lower of average gaming power. That's better for power consumption of your system, which means lower energy bills, lower heat. Um, it, it's a good thing. Um, the super upgrade here, they're talking about games with frame gen. So they really like to talk about frame gen when they compare it to previous generation cards. Unfortunately, that's not a direct apples to apples comparison because of the fact that frame gen is not available on 30 series or 20 series cards. That is a DLSS3 function, which is only available on 40 series cards. So that's why you have here the 
you have the three numbers, right? The light gray is the 2080 Super, the dark gray is the 3080 Ti, and then the 4080 Super, as you can see right here, like five to six times that the performance of the 2080 Super, but that's with frame gen. Now it drops down significantly on games without frame gen, as you can see right here, like Metro Exodus Enhanced, you can see they're much closer together, but still a huge performance leap nonetheless. So with all that said, let's move on to the 4070 Ti Super. Also has 16 gigabytes of G6X memory. I'm happy to see these 16 gigabyte cards. That was one of the things people, consumers really sort of complained about with Nvidia versus AMD. Whether or not the title could use all that VRAM, gimping a card with 10 gigabit or gigabytes or 12 gigabytes of VRAM or eight gigabytes of VRAM when 16 gigabytes, it's not that expensive to add the RAM to be honest, but adding more VRAM to a card, uh, whether or not it's red pill, blue pill or not, it's it's a nice thing to have, knowing you have plenty of, of VRAM and frame buffer built into your card. Anyway, it replaces the 4070 Ti at the same price point. So we're getting more performance for the same price. And this is, this is like, it's kind of like how 30 series is what was supposed to be like the golden era of graphics cards where we were getting so much more performance in 20 series and it was so much less expensive. Although this is not a price drop like we saw with the 20 series versus 30 series, it is at least in this instance here for the 4070 Ti Super, more performance for the same price, although still $800 is not chump change. That is an expensive card. That, that is a, a high-end card for all intents and purposes that's out of the attainable price reach for many, many, many people. But that's also better than what Nvidia could have done, which would have been drop the 4070 Ti altogether at 799 and launch the 4070 Ti Super at 849 and call it a day. But then it would have been only $50 cheaper than a 4080 Super, which would have been a really weird spot to be in. So you can see the, the pricing structure here and and it's, uh, it's complications, if you will. But anyway, it's a January 24th launch. As you can see, it's gonna be one week prior to the 4080 Super, which is January 31st. Um, but they're showing 2.5X versus 3070 Ti in terms of uh, gaming performance. So if we look at the, the uh, and remember that's relative, that's like frame gen and all that stuff on. So big asterisks, because 3070 Ti did not have frame gen. So if we look at the 2070 Super, it was nine shader T-flops versus 22 with the 3070 Ti versus 44 with the 4070 Super. Um, here's that DLSS I was talking about. Both those cards are DLSS 2, no frame, no frame gen, DLSS 3 with frame gen. Um, but look, the 3070 Ti had eight gigabytes of G6X. Whereas now the 4070 Ti Super has double that at 16 gigabytes. And if we look at the effective speed too, it's uh, 48 megabytes of L2 cache versus four megabytes of the L2 cache of the 3070 Ti, giving us an effect of 672 gigabytes per second. But look at this, a power drop, right? 226 average gaming watts, 285 watt TGP. They did uplift that that total that TGP power, by the way. They kind of had to, to be able to get more performance out of it. But the 4070 Ti was on 8104 and the 4070 Ti Super is actually on 8103. So it's really like a little bit more of a cut down 4080 than it is a 4070. So you can see why they kind of had to get rid of the 4080, right? Not to mention there's not a lot of room there, especially if you drop the price of the 4080 Super to 999 and this is 800, they're only $100 apart. There's no room for a 40, uh, 4080 in there anymore. But anyway, look at this power draw though, 285 total graphics power versus and 226 average gaming power to get pretty damn close to a 4080 performance with uh, 226 watts. I guess that actually shines light on just how bad the 4090 is. Here's that same, the same titles with the same relative performance. Remember games with frame gen, as you can see, because of DLSS 3. But as you can see with frame gen on, which it's funny, there's a lot of people that either do or don't like it. The problem with frame gen being on is some games, depending on how, how Twitch response they are, um, adds a little bit of latency to your controller input or your mouse and keyboard input. So a lot of people don't like to turn it on if ultra low latency is important. So that's why it's important to talk about with it off as well, because interpolation also adds latency depending on the title. So that's why it looks like such a huge gap. But if we come down here to games without frame gen, you can see it's, there is a bigger jump still between the 3070 Ti and the 30, 4070 Ti Super than there was between the 2070 Super and the 3070 Ti. So again, more performance jump generationally, uh, and again, staying at the same price point is important. Nvidia could have done the move of making it more expensive because more performance, keeping that price per dollar 
bracket just slid out like they did for this whole gen. Okay, so here we go. 4070 Super, it's that weird uncle you never invited to Christmas but showed up anyway, um, a la National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. So as you can see here, it's a $599 card available January 17th, faster than the 3090, faster. We'll talk about that in a second here. But um, yeah, so this is an addition to the lineup. It's not replacing the 4070. It is now in between the 4070 and the 4070 Ti Super. So now you have 4070, 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super. So three 4070 cards, which might make sense considering more people shop a 70 series card than they do an 80 series card. You can name the card whatever you want when it's priced like a Typical 80 series card in the past, it's still a high-end card that's very expensive. But as you can see right here, it's got 12 gigabytes of G6X. Um, it's a 200 watt average gaming power, 220 watt TGP. So it's basically all the same stuff you saw with like the 4070 in terms of TGP and stuff. It's just more, code, more cores available to it, which is giving you your power uplift. Uh, versus the previous 70 series cards are eight gig gigabytes. 12 gigabytes is uh, nothing to scoff at there. Same sort of relative performance here like we saw with frame gen on, quite a bit faster than stuff that doesn't have frame gen, that's how features work. Uh, fra without frame gen, as you can see, pretty linear steps in performance. Speaking of linear steps, here's how it looks right here with uh, relative performance versus a 2070. You can see that's a very linear scale, right? It's, it's very intentional on the way that the gaps work between the cards. If you turn on frame gen and you care about that and you're playing titles that it's less important that you have the ultra fast, low latency response of your inputs, then you can see you get even more performance stretched out. It is a feature that's available on 40 series cards that you should consider. I don't think it's something you should say, no, I don't want it because there's plenty of titles where you turn it on and you will never notice it, like flight sim, stuff like that. But if we're talking like Rocket League, if we're talking about shooters, stuff that latency matters for input, then you're, you would want to make sure that you're not you're running DLSS 3 in those titles. Relative power though, so if we look at the performance here of non-frame gen, you can see the 3090 is a little behind the 4070 Super. Uh, in our meeting, they were very forthcoming, saying some titles the 3090 is going to be faster, some titles the 30, or 4070 is faster, uh, obviously with frame gen off. Frame gen on, as you can see, pushes out quite a bit. But just the... The impressive thing about Ada Lovelace, regardless of how you feel about the graphics cards or their prices, is their efficiency. So if that's true about a 4070 being faster than a 3090 in any title, 220 watts versus 350, it's a pretty big deal. If you're gaming a lot, all the time, if you're just, if you're just one of those people that's like, I'm a homebody, I spend all eight hours of me not being awake or at work or whatever playing games, that extra 130 watts with your power bill could make up the difference in cost that matters. Like it could be a tangible amount of money at the end of the year that you've actually saved in terms of lost um, money due to you know, your, your power bill. So it's something to consider. And then here's how the pricing works. So you got the 299, 4060. I wish we had a 249 card. I wish a 4050 or something would come out or a 4050 Super or something to bring it down to at least 279, 249. That's a very competitive price point. I feel like there's like too much of a gap there. 399 4060 Ti, 549 RTX 4070, so that price hasn't changed, that card hasn't changed, it's just existing still. It's an entry price point for like the high-end cards. 599 for 40 Super, 799 for the 4070 Ti Super. That $200 gap, it's a weird gap. I don't think they would try and slide something in there. What would it be called? But I think that's just because the 799 4070 Ti Super is on the AD103, and I think the cost of making AD103 is just enough to warrant that price. But anyway, at least the 4080 Super is $200 less, replacing the 4080 and then the 4090 at $1599, that hasn't changed. That's that's still the price it always, it's always been. There you go. Um, obviously, you need to watch independent reviews to see how this performance stacks out. I don't think it'll be anything shocking or surprising. It's all on the architectures we've already seen. We've got more than a year experience with these architectures now. We've got more than a year experience with frame gen. We know what to expect. All we want to do is check some of these claims of like, is it really faster than a 3090, etc. Imagine having a $599 40 Super faster than a $1,500 3090. Phil, how's that make you feel? You're on a 3090, aren't you? I want a 4080. Oh yeah, that's right, I broke your 3090. Well, you didn't break it. You it's just, still sitting over there in pieces. You just didn't have a block for it after you ripped it. You're the like, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's say recently, here we go, hypothetical. Had you, and we're asking Phil now, had you bought that 4080 for $1,350, because it's a custom card, right? Yeah. A few months back, 
and a faster card comes out for $9.99, how would you feel as a consumer? Yeah, I'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah. Now, and that was the message I was trying to get across when I said, you know, Nvidia has like kind of screwed people with that whole pricing. It's but good I, for the new people. It's good for the new people. Like, out of spite, do you want the new people to have to pay more? Or would you say like, oh. okay. <laughs> There's people out there that are like, screw them, make yeah. them pay 1200 bucks. All right, this is where you guys sound off in the comments below. How do you feel about these new cards coming out? Um, it's a competitive stack. It really is. So there you go. We're gonna be testing all of it. It's gonna be a crazy January with a new GPU benchmark launch three weeks in a row, which is something we've never done before. <laughs> so better fire up that test rig and get it going. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next one.